You guys loving cicadas? Yeah, has that been good so far? It's a funny story. This morning, I was, uh, I was up, I was getting ready to come into church. I took my dog out to use the, the bathroom in the backyard and uh, come back in, came to kiss my wonderful wife, Holly, goodbye. And uh, I lean over, because she's still in bed, and I lean over to kiss her, and she's leaning in, and she almost headbutts me and screams because there's a cicada sitting on my shoulder. <laughs> and, uh, and it was quite a moment, and I was like, just be cool. It's not gonna eat you. Just get outside, get this thing off of you. And I was like, gotta be cool for my lady so she knows I'm under control here. And I quickly exited the house and freaked out on the back porch trying to get this thing <laughs> off of me. And here we are, and I'm uh, still alive. No cicadas got me. That has nothing to do with my message. I just wanted to tell it because it was a funny story. All right, we've been uh, in this series called God of Emotions, and this, oh, sorry, Emotional by Design. Did I say that wrong first service? Whoops. We're in this series called Emotional by Design, and this is part four. At one point, this was going to be called God of Emotions, just so you all know. Um, and... Uh, I'm speaking today on part four. We've had three really great messages so far in this series, and a phrase that came up in two of those, ser or two of those messages is this. We are meant to master our emotions, not be mastered by them. We are meant to master our emotions, not be mastered by them. And so today, I want to share with you something that is actually quite personal and something the Lord has been teaching me over the last couple years um, about mastering my emotions. And, and I want to share with this, this, uh, this tool, this weapon with you to help you master your emotions rather than being mastered by them. Um, first, I want to answer the question, why should we master them? Why should we master our emotions? Just recently, I heard this great quote. It goes like this. Emotions are great advisors, but they are terrible decision makers. Yeah, emotions are great advisors, but they're terrible decision makers. Has anybody here ever been like annoyed or ticked off with their boss? Anybody? This is not just an example. My hand is actually up. I've been annoyed and ticked off at my boss before. And uh, you ever like allowed that to spiral a little bit and you're kind of like, they don't appreciate me, and they don't know what I do here, and uh, you know, on and on, and you're, you know what? I'm gonna quit, because I'm annoyed, or I'm mad. You ever thought that? Yeah? Well, that's an emotion trying to make a decision for you. It's, it, it's, it, it's telling you how you feel. You feel annoyed, you feel frustrated, but then it's like, so because of that, let's do this. And if if you're in a place where like, you know, maybe some of you might need to leave your job. You might be underappreciated, undercompensated, whatever. But if you quit your job every time you get annoyed or ticked off at your boss or at a situation at work, you're never going to have a job. And, and like our, our lives would be in ruin if we allowed our emotions to make decisions for us. They're great advisors, but they're terrible decision makers. Um, in Genesis 1.28, We've got this uh, thing called the creation mandate where God is creating humans and he's kind of giving them a job. And, and he says, it says this, God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves. Do me a favor really quick. Raise your hand if you are a living thing that moves. <laughs> Boom. All right. Part of... The, in, in the creation mandate, humanity is charged with having dominion over creation, and you are part of creation. So, you are made to, we are made to master ourselves, and that includes mastering our emotions, being, like, being in charge of our internal world. Now, this week, Wilson and I were um, talking about my message, and and we were trying to figure out what is, like, what's the best way to categorize emotions? And so often we try to give, like, we make, like, two categories, like, positive and negative, or 
healthy, unhealthy, um, comfortable, uncomfortable. And, and we were just, we were trying to think through like, what's like, what's the best one? What's the best way to describe emotions? And what we realized is that rarely can you just put them into like this positive or negative kind of area, but th there's, there's more to it. And so we started to, to talk about it and we, we are messing around with this emotional paradigm that we uh, came up with. Can you throw that up on the, on the slide here for us? Um, so Luke's not here, but we, we used some of his anointing to make a graph um, and I think it's a pretty good one. But, so this is something we came up with, and I just want to say, I don't think it's perfect. We, we invented it on Wednesday, so it's not necessarily tried and true yet, but this um, seems to be a helpful tool for understanding what you're feeling and experiencing in your internal world and giving it a, a place to recognize, like, where it goes, where it belongs. Um, <clears throat> this is not something for you to use to, like, diagnose yourself as a person. Um, it, it, uh, I think that this is probably the most helpful thing to use when saying, like, I'm feeling something. What am I feeling? Where does it go? How do I feel about it? Is it good for me? Is it bad for me? That kind of thing. Um, and so let's just jump into it. We've got... Uh, the, so unhealthy, healthy, uncomfortable, and comfortable. In the top right corner, we've got comfortable and healthy emotions. These are emotions that um, we're comfortable with. We like them. I, I like to experience this emotion, and it's good for me. So like you might put happiness here most of the time. Like I like to feel happy, and when I feel happy, it's like at the appropriate time. I'm, I'm responding uh, to things that cause me to be happy, I'm comfortable, I like feeling happy, that's comfortable and healthy. Underneath it, we have uncomfortable but healthy. So these are emotions um, for us, maybe, excuse me. The, the, this is like a place to put an emotion that is um, good for you, but we might not like it when we feel it. For example, sadness. There are, there are good times to be sad. When we're, when we're faced with loss. It's good and it's okay to be sad, but we might not like feeling sad. Anytime I've ever been sad and I've recognized like it's good that I'm sad right now, I'm not thinking like, but I wanna stay here for a while. I, I'm kind of like uncomfortable in it, but I recognize it's good for me. Uh, then to the left there, we've got uncomfortable. Is, yeah, it's the left. Okay, uncomfortable and unhealthy. These are emotions where we recognize, I don't like how this makes me feel, and I don't think it's good for me. So this is where emotions like um, envy or rage would go. Uh, you know, I, I'm feeling this thing, and I don't like it, and it's not good for me. And then the last box up here in the top left is the comfortable but unhealthy. Um, and this is where unhealthy emotions may have become your normal. Luke uh, spoke the first week of the series, and he talked about uh, the passage where it says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. And, uh, and as he taught us, it's not about getting in a fight with your spouse and then not going to bed until you've solved the problem, but it's, it's not losing sight of what caused you to be angry. And I would say that a person who would end up in this comfortable but unhealthy box is probably someone who has let the sun go down on an emotion like that, where it is just, you've totally lost sight of, of where it came from, and it's just your, it's kind of your new normal. And when we say comfortable, it doesn't necessarily mean like you like it or um, want it there, but you probably don't recognize it's there. This might be someone where, if you've ever met someone who just seems bitter, and they just kind of seem angry at the world all the time, and you've never seen them in a good mood, and I often associate that with angry neighbors from my childhood. They're like, get off my lawn, kind of people. And uh, they probably don't even realize it, but their normal has just become kind of the state of unhealthy emotion, and they're living from that place. So that's our emotional paradigm. Today, I want to uh, spend a lot of time talking primarily about how 
What do we do when we, are, we find ourselves in that uncomfortable and unhealthy place where we recognize, I don't like what I'm feeling and I don't think it's good for me. How do we, how do we fight against that? Um, and, but, but before we do that, I just wanna say some emotions or, or feelings or whatever, whatever you wanna call it, there are some things that we experience in our internal world that are just not good for us. Most of the things that we feel and experience can probably end up anywhere on that paradigm depending on the situation. But I think there are some that they are just always unhealthy. If, you've, uh, if you're familiar with Galatians 5 and this passage on the fruit of the Spirit, um, the Apostle Paul gives this list of things that are evidences of the Spirit's work in your life. Uh, but before that, he gives this list um, that you might call the fruits of the flesh or the acts of the flesh. And it's, it's a similar list, but it's all these things that are just not good for you as a, as, a, as, a, as a person, as a follower of Jesus. And within that, we see a lot of things that are either birthed out of unhealthy emotions or they just like are straight up stated unhealthy emotions. Some of them are hatred, fleshly jealousy, rage, envy, like the, these things are never good for you. And so I wanna talk about how do we deal with those um, when they pop up? And, and that tool, that, that weapon is called thankfulness. And um, this has been the most helpful for me when I've recognized I don't like what I'm feeling and I don't think it's good for me. I'm in that lower left quadrant, uncomfortable and unhealthy. And I, I, I want to spend the rest of our time here, but I do recognize there are many other God-given tools and weapons to fight against and, and, and mend and heal emotional stuff in us. Thankfulness is just the one that I'm going to talk about today. Um, so thankfulness, it's all over the place in the Bible. There's tons of it in the New Testament, and especially in the writings of this guy, uh, the Apostle Paul. He wrote at least 13 letters in the New Testament. And I say at least because the book of Hebrews, no one's really sure who wrote it, but some people say it was him. So maybe he's got 14. We don't know. Um, but he, he writes in these 13 that we know that are attributed to him, in nine of those 13 letters, at the very beginning of the letter, in his greeting, he says some form of the phrase, I thank my God when I think of you. Maybe you've gotten a, a, a graduation card or something from your Christian grandmother that says, I thank my God when I think of you. I got a few of those. But he, he writes that in some form in nine of his 13 letters. Um, and just a couple things to note here. First, when, the, when Paul is writing a letter and he has this greeting, um, it's not just a trite hello I need to put filler in here to start a letter. Sometimes we kind of do that in our, in our conversations. We say, hey, how are you? But we're also kind of thinking like, please don't actually tell me how you are. <laughs> Maybe it's just me, but doubt it. Um, but Paul, when he opens his letters, there's actually spiritual weight behind the words that he's saying. He's actually releasing blessing and, and some like really cool supernatural stuff into them, and, and, and we're not gonna talk about that a ton, but basically just know, like he means it when he says, I thank my God every time I think of you, or every time I pray, I, and I, I thank my God. He means it. He's actually thankful for the people that he's writing to. And of these nine letters, in at least one of them, the letter of the first Corinthians, Paul has to lay down like a serious church discipline level, like smackdown on this church, because there's just a ton of like crazy stuff uh, going on in the church in Corinth. Um, they, they, they have like this kind of this disorderly worship service thing and stuff's crazy and people are talking when they shouldn't be and, and it's, it's very disorderly. And then on top of that, they've got a number of like sin issues that they're facing in their church, including this one guy. Uh, it tells us that he's sleeping with his, with his stepmom and it's not just a him problem. The whole church seems to be aware of it and okay with it. And so like he is thanking God for this church that's just like got some serious issues. 
and, 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 and he means it. That's a crazy way to start a, start a letter. Um, in, the, in the four letters that he doesn't start with an explicit statement of, of, I thank God, two of them contain teaching or statements on thanksgiving. And so in 11 of Paul's 13 letters, we see the explicit use or, or teaching on um, thankfulness and thanksgiving. And so all that to say, it's a, it's a topic of great importance uh, to the Apostle Paul and to us as, as uh, believers in Jesus. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, Paul kind of lays out his whole thinking on thankfulness. He says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Give thanks in all circumstances. Everybody say, all circumstances. All circumstances. That was... First service was louder. Can we try it again? Everybody say, all circumstances. All circumstances. All right. Uh, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. This pretty much sums up Paul's thinking on this topic. Always be doing it. Always be thankful. Um, at all times, no matter how you feel, no matter what you're experiencing, no matter what's going on around you, no matter what they said to you, no matter what's been done to you, no matter um, what your emotional state is, give thanks in all circumstances. And I believe that Christians ought to be the most thankful people on the earth. And I think that this comes from at least two really, really important revelations that, that followers of Jesus carry. And that's this one, the first one, is that every good and perfect gift is from the Father. Every good thing in your life, whether you realize it or not, came directly from Him. There's no amount of, like, our own ability to gain something new or better in our life because He gave you the ability. Like, that's from Him. Like, all the way down to the core, anything that you can do is because He created you that way. Anything that we can produce in our, like, what we assume is our own strength is actually, like, his working in our lives. And, and it's important to recognize, everything is a gift from the Father. It's not uh, good karma because you were nice to somebody else. It's not a cosmic accident from the universe. It is a good gift from a good Father who loves you and is wooing the world with his kindness. And that ought to lead us to a place of thankfulness, knowing that everything is his, comes from him, and like, I get just good and awesome things because he's such a good dad. And the second thing is like it, but it's way better. We should be thankful because of Jesus on the cross. This is just the greatest gift of all time. There is nothing on earth, in the universe, in all of existence, of all time, or that will ever exist that is as valuable as the blood of Jesus. And he gave it all on your behalf. Amen. And it is, it is more than enough to totally like cleanse you and bring you straight before the Father. And, um, and he gives it all away freely. There was nothing that we could do to reestablish or re-enter relationship with the Father, so he did all the work. And now we get to be in eternal connection with him. And there was nothing we could do to earn it or deserve it, and he doesn't even ask us to pay him back. He just says, this is yours. So the most valuable thing that we have as followers of Jesus was a free gift. And if, if you're a follower of Jesus, just take a second here. Where were you before him? Where would you be now without him? Where were you headed without him? And that ought to move us to thanks. Yeah? Amen? All right. So rapid fire. Here are five things that I feel like I've learned about thankfulness in the last two or three years. 
First thing, thankfulness removes or alleviates unhealthy emotions. I think that thankfulness can act as this like supernatural power washer for our brains and our, and our, our hearts. If you've ever seen a, a power washer work, my, my neighbor has white siding and every spring he does it, he pulls his power washer out and just sprays it and all the gunk that's just built up over the year, it's just gone in an instant. I think it's got the power to totally wipe out unhealthy emotions and, and, or, or feelings that we're experiencing in a moment and change the underlying beliefs that actually led us to feel that thing. So when I was uh, starting here, um, Van was my boss. Direct, like he, He's still my boss, but I, I reported directly to Van. Um, and then as I was here for about a year or so, we started restructuring the, the staff and, and all of that stuff. There's a picture of it somewhere. It's, it looks like a tree. Um, and Wilson actually became my direct overseer rather than Van. Um, and v Wilson and I had a, a rocky start to our uh, boss-employee relationship. And I was certainly not the easiest person to lead and, and, and I carried into this relationship a lot of like, well, why can't, why are you my boss now? And um, I remember just feeling so frustrated anytime I had to come in for a, a reporting meeting and we, we'd meet weekly. So at least one day a week, I entered the office here just frustrated and annoyed and, and not wanting to be here. And I remember one day, uh, there was some specific problem going on, but for the life of me, I can't remember what the situation was, and we were gonna like deal with it in our meeting. And I left my house, and, and I was driving to work, and I was just, you know, all the normal things, like, oh, Wilson doesn't know anything. <laughs> Unhealthy emotions lie to you as well. And, and I was just like spitting those lies. Wilson doesn't know anything. He's not qualified to lead me. He doesn't get it, blah, blah, blah. And, and as I'm driving and I'm, my anger and frustration and annoyance is building, I realize that that's not good. Just something like flips on in my heart. I don't know what it was. And I was just like, this, like I love my job. Wilson's actually my friend, believe it or not, based on the stuff that I was just saying. Um, like, what is this? And, and I just started to list things that I loved about Wilson out loud in my car as I was driving down 275. And I just started to thank God for him, thank God for his uh, teaching gift that he's got, and thanking God for his position in my life and in the church, and sort of thanking God for all the, all the people that have entered the kingdom because of his boldness in evangelism. And, and I started thanking God for all the things that I admire about him. And I remember as I pulled into the church, all of the like, frustration and, and anger and, and whatever it was, it was, it was just gone. And it hasn't come back since. And yeah, this, it's amazing. Um, oh. I was believing all these things about Wilson that were wrong. And in thankfulness, it totally changed my mindset about him. But sometimes it takes a little bit more than this. Like maybe you've like allowed something to just like take root in your heart and it's, it's just kind of sat there for a while and, and Thanksgiving, it might alleviate it. Being thankful might, it might kind of remove that, that like moment of frustration, rage, whatever it is. Um, but it's really giving us an opportunity to kind of take a look under the rug and see like what, what we need to clean up. Because emotions, they're... Um, they, they reveal something in our hearts and they're always an invitation into mind renewal and thinking the way God does. And so um, if it doesn't just totally wipe out the, the unhealthy whatever you're dealing with, um, it's gonna give you space to start searching out and asking like, what am I believing that led me to feel this way? Next thing, thankfulness combats unhealthy emotions and complements healthy ones. Giving thanks can increase joy and provide purpose and richness and sadness. Just a couple years ago, my great-grandmother passed away, and uh, I, I love this lady so much. In fact, my, my daughter, Cecilia, is named after her, and uh, I called her Grandma Boats. Grandma Boats 
has meant so much to me in my life. And, and of course, I was just so sad when she passed. Um, and my mom at the funeral asked me to share just stories and memories and stuff about Grandma Boats. And, and in the middle of the, when, when, you, when the preacher invited everyone to do it, I stood up and I started to share. And I started to like just share these stories of how like, of what she's meant to me in my life and just the impact that she's had on me. And, and I was so thankful for her life. But in that moment, the thankfulness, it didn't remove the sadness. And it might have made me more sad as I realized just like how great the loss was. But it, but it added this like richness into my mourning. Um, but then on the other hand, thankfulness, it helps us fight unhealthy emotions. It, it just like, removes the power from um, the, the, these like terrible feelings. It, it defeats frustration and stress like we were, uh, the frustration I was sharing about Wilson. It can change our perspective um, in like deep sadness. It, it reorients our thinking um, when we're tempted to be jealous or envious. And um, it's also this like doorway to peace and it's just really awesome. Next thing. Thanksgiving allows us to see situations and people rightly. Emotions, if we were to personify them, are a little bit selfish. It's not selfish to have emotions, but if emotions were people, they would be selfish because they're just all about themselves. The, uh, if you've ever seen the movie Inside Out, the Pixar movie, it really depicts this. It's got these, I think there's five main characters, five. Sophie's my Disney buff over there. Um, it's got these five main characters and they're all emotions. There's joy and there's sadness and there's anger and then there's two other ones that I can't think of right now. And uh, they are only, they only feel what they are. So joy is always joyful. Sadness is always sad. Anger is always angry. Um, and that's like, that's a great picture of like what emotions are like. They, they are what they are and they don't care about anyone else. Um, and so this, this matters because in the midst of feeling um, especially unhealthy emotions, you're probably not seeing the full picture. When you're angry with someone, you're probably not thinking about how kind they are to you or how generous they are or how much they love you. You're probably thinking, I'm mad at this person because X, Y, and Z. And if you are thinking about how kind they are and how much you love them, your anger is probably subsiding. And this is why emotions are bad decision makers. They, they just think about themselves. They don't think about the whole picture. And I think Thanksgiving, it allows us to see a situation rightly, especially when dealing with unhealthy emotions, um, because it kind of removes the fog. As you start listing things or, 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 or um, just saying out loud things that you're thankful for, um, it, it kind of takes you out of that place, that, that, that fog of the unhealthy emotion. Uh, next one, thankfulness changes our perspective. I, I found this one, especially when dealing with comparison, that uh, thankfulness brings me back to contentment. Comparison is, um, it's this thing that it's, it's trying to take blessings from God and turn them into curses. Comparison takes our blessings from God and turns them into self-imposed curses. It's uh, you know, when we're saying, I'm not where they are in life. I don't get to do the things that they get to do. Um, I'm not as good at this as they are. Or you know, fill in the blank, whatever. Um, it's taking our eyes off of like what God is actually doing or has done in you or for you. It's like, okay, yeah, they may get to do that, but that's not what God has for you right now. They may be there, but God has you here. And, and as I, in, in my experiences, I am able to shift my eyes from what you know, my friends are doing or what um, other youth pastors are doing and, and all that stuff, and I think about just all the things that God has done for me, in me, through me, it reorients my, my, my thinking and it, it changes my perspective back to where God desires me to be. And the last thing here, thankfulness initiates kingdom activity. In, uh, in the book of Mark, right before Jesus multiplies the, the bread and the fish and feeds 5,000 people, 
um, it, it specifically says Jesus gave thanks and then broke the bread and passed it out. And I, I certainly don't want to make like some weird doctrine out of this, but I just, I also don't believe that there are any phrases or words in the gospels by accident. And so I think it's very specific and, and intentional that it, that it mentions his thankfulness uh, before he performs the miracle. Um, another thing that we, we see in, uh, in Philippians chapter four, one of my, two of my favorite verses in the Bible, uh, it says this, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So there's a couple components there, but one of those things is thanksgiving. In the midst of being anxious about something, offering thanksgiving to God opens our hearts to receive his peace. There's just something about thanksgiving that God loves. It's like catnip for the Holy Spirit to just like show up and do amazing stuff. In Psalm 100, verse 3, it says, um, let us enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. This is a picture of the temple and where God's presence is in the center of it. And as we start to approach him, it's with thankfulness. Um, just the other day, I was, I'm, I'm, I was reading this book called The Quest for the Radical Middle. It's the, the story of the vineyard movement, which our church is a part of. If you've never read it, I highly recommend it. Um, it's powerful. And like, I've just felt God on it every time I read it. And he's doing some cool stuff through it. But one day I was reading and uh, I was just learning about the history of the, the leaders in the vineyard and uh, how the, the founder, John Wimber, came out of um, this this belief system that said the, the supernatural gifts weren't for today, that, that healing didn't happen, that God wasn't speaking and, and all that stuff. But then God kind of flipped that and turned him into like wanting like one of the, like the leading equippers in the history of the world in how to see healing and, and all the supernatural awesome stuff happen. But it hit me as I was reading about him that like that was my story, not the leading in the world in equipping people um, yet. But, um, but I did come out of a, a faith tradition that didn't believe in the supernatural gifts. And, and it reminded me that our, our senior pastor, Van, came from that kind of same background. And I just thought, man, it's so cool to be part of the vineyard. And as I was reading, I just felt like God was prompting me to put my book down and start to just thank him for the vineyard movement. So I, I was sitting at my kitchen table, I flipped my book over, and in my mind, I was about to say out loud, Jesus, thank you. And I said, Jesus, and then my face got really tight. And I'm not one to have crazy encounters publicly or privately. But my, like, I'm, I'm just sitting there, normal breakfast at the table, reading a book, nobody else is home. Jesus, face tightens, tears just start streaming from my eyes. I can't stop smiling, it hurts, I'm smiling so big, and I'm just laughing uncontrollably for two minutes and just could not do anything else. Couldn't even finish the prayer. I, I think he knew what I was saying. Um, and there's just something about thankfulness, that, that like the Holy Spirit's just on it. And he, he wants to do really powerful stuff through your life um, with this weapon. So I wanna encourage us, just this week, let's practice intentional thankfulness. So often we allow ourselves to be surprised by thankfulness or like, you know, someone gave me a gift and man, I just feel thankful, that's awesome. Um, reading the book and I just feel thankful. But Paul says to do it all the time, in all circumstances, give thanks. And so this week, I, I just wanna encourage you, let, let's practice intentional thanksgiving. Just, you know, when you wake up, when you're brushing your teeth, what, whenever, just choose to be thankful. Start listing things that you're thankful for. Start listing the things about God that you're thankful for. Listen to whatever song we did at the end there. Like, it's all about thankfulness. Um, and I bet if you started right now, you could, you'd get to the end of your life and you'd still have things to thank God for. 
Like, there's just so much. So let's, uh, let, let's do some ministry here. Would you guys stand with me? It's so nice. You guys get to sit, and I have to stand up here the whole time. I want to, I we did this last service, and this is something my friend showed me recently, but I'd like you to put your hands out in front of you. We do this a lot. In student revival, we say, assume the position, and we all get locked in. And, and we often describe this as like, like, get your hands ready as if God is about to give you something. But right now, what I want us to do is prepare to give God something. In your hands, I just want you to like imagine a box. Maybe make your box a little bit bigger. I want to give them a good gift. And I just want you to start, whether out loud or in your head, to start filling that box with things that you're thankful for. Start offering him thanksgiving. Jesus, thank you for your blood. Thank you for redemption. Thank you for freedom. Father, thank you for every good and perfect gift. Feel your box get heavier. So Father, thank you for healing. You've poured it out on so many. Thank you for leaders who have gone before us, who are faithful to you, and on their shoulders we get to stand now. So whatever you got to do, just offer that box to God, whether you hand it to him or something. The Holy Spirit, we welcome your presence here. Just welcome you. Come fill this room. Come overwhelm us with your presence. We love your presence. There's a few things that I feel like the Lord wants to do. Van, do you have any words that you want to share? No. Hey, if you're on the prayer team and you're able, could you come down here? I want us to pray for some people. Um, but just a, a thing, just a couple things that I felt like the Lord was saying is that there might be someone here um, with jaw problems in their right jaw. Is that TMJ? Is that a word that could be? I, that was like, a, I don't know what those letters mean. I know that it has something to do with the jaw, but if, if that's you, I want you to come down and get prayer here in a minute. And then also, um, I had this weird, like, earlier, just for a second, like a shooting pain in the left side of my head um, on the back, like kind of like lower base of my skull, and I, I feel like the Lord might be just like highlighting someone with some problem in their skull or their brain, whether it be a tumor um, or some kind of nerve damage, but if, if that's you, would you also just come down um, and, and receive some prayer? Um, and then lastly, just anyone who just feels like they need some kind of emotional healing or, or, or freedom um, in their lives, if you uh, just come get prayer from these uh, supernatural ninja warriors up here.